everyone, hey and welcome back to yet another episode of Battle Rap Resume. I'm here with a recap, a pay-per-view recap, an event that just happened last night. That was, of course, King of the Dots Massacre free event. Huge event. Seems like there were so many people in attendance. A lot of people watching the pay-per-view as well. So yeah, I'm just going to give my quick little review of the battles. I mostly, well, actually no, I, I kind of tried to watch it live. I sort of got home late. Put on the pay-per-view, which of course shattered to Avocado and the whole team was crisp as fuck. The connection's incredible. You know, it's kind of pay-per-view through the paradigm of Avocado and King of the Dot has been completely transformed. And obviously URL are doing good pay-per-views at the moment. But, you know, I remember the more jankier, familiar bedfellows where, you know, they would lag a lot or go down or whatever reason, you know, sort of back to the basic stuff. But with the bunker and moving forward, the um, pay-per-view has jumped up stratospherically. So definitely, definitely pick this up as well. KingofTheDotTV.com forward slash watch mass free i'm sure if you just you know google king of the dot pay-per-view all that good stuff it's 30 dollars. it is you know a bargain there is a lot of good material to get on here and it's definitely worth supporting as well but yeah quality wise exceptional very very easy very fun to digest to access as well so just before we get to the battles as well at Battle Art Resume, follow us on Twitter. Get in touch with us, Battle Art Resume at gmail.com. Comment below as well. What did you think about the Massacre Battles? You know, do you disagree with me? Um, maybe, you know, you've got differing opinions on certain bars, whatever like that. But yeah, get in contact with me all the different ways. There's a Patreon as well, patreon.com forward slash Battle Art Resume. All these descriptions are in the links. All these links are in the description. And there you can help to support the show. You can get access to lots of bonus material. You can give back, you know, you can get behind the scenes material and all that sort of stuff. So behind the scenes content. So, yeah, support the show, but let's get into this. So, Masker Free, much, much hyped event. And I've got to be honest, off the bat, really, not as good as Massacre 2 on the face of it. Maybe the battles are growing me a bit more. All these reviews pretty much are first watch reviews as well. I'm not going to try and spoil too much there. But, yeah, I didn't feel, um, like, just kind of recollecting as I was watching Mass Free that, like, you know, certain battles in Mass 2, like, you know, Yahala versus Pat, and even Joe I, Danny Myers. I love B-Magic versus Iron Solomon as well. You know, certain performances at that event that just kind of, um, I think that outshone a lot here. And I think uh, some of the performances as well were marred by chokes. This was especially pertinent during the first battle, um, Shot EP versus Shotgun Shug, which was uh, it's a pretty boring battle, I've got to be honest with you. I've not got much to say on this. I thought both of them didn't do much. I thought Shotty P struggled to come out of his shell early on. I think Shug had a sh make Shotty P line, which was kind of, you know, eye-rolling. There was a lot of generic stuff here. Um, You know, it's a big chance for Shotty, really, and he wasn't seeming to take with the full horns, you know. I believe he had to end his third, if I remember correctly, um, because he was choking quite badly. Shug as well, you know, had a lot of just kind of, you know, stopping his verse here and there, and it was the odd line and you know oh he's gonna just pap his pockets and that means something for some reason now even though he's seen it like literally 15 times or so you know so not the best battle to kick it off with like creatively but you know the audience seemed to be excited and I should say as well when you look at this footage it's crazy like there are so many people in this you know what's effectively a gig venue they really span out on the red and you know it's kind of uncluttered as well the way it's all organized like the mise en scene the cinematography of this event looks fantastic obviously props to that but yeah I wasn't really feeling that intro battle to be honest with you it didn't really stir me now um the next battle was a battle that I was you know majorly looking forward to and my predictions were completely off this was um Charlie Clips versus Saurus, which, you know, from the off really was kind of starting on a bad a bad note, because if anyone that's followed Saurus seen on Twitter that, you know, he'd been constantly tweeting about how Clips hadn't been constantly tweeting about the event, Clips had pretty much done no promo for it, and Saurus in his own sort of, you know, sportsman-like, uh, slightly heckling way, you know, always very comedic, was sort of you doing these tweets pretty much daily, just sort of calling Clips out, you know, hashtagging, etc., and it was a bit of a shame, really, I definitely felt this, you know, when I was building up to the event, like, it would have been better if there was maybe a vlog or two from Clips, you know, because it's a big event, it's a big battle, is what it is, Clips versus Saurus, you know, it's one of those, these are definitely two titans, two legends of the respective fields, and, you know, for them to go toe-to-toe -to -toe is very exciting, so, therefore, it's a shame that this battle was such a letdown, really, Um, you know, we get to the actual battle itself, building up to it, and, you know, I was very excited, I was watching this, I hadn't no, read any tweets, you know, it was, like, live in the moment or whatever, so I was really going through this, really kind of, you know, geared up for it, and it was, um... 
yeah, I just, I just kind of, uh, like, it left a bad taste in my mouth instantly. Like, the atmosphere was off. Like, even from them arguing about the coin toss to Soros in his first kicking off by saying, like, he was fucking Clips' grandmother. And even Clips is like, my grandmother? You know, Clips is a bit... And it was just a bit of a... I don't know. I mean, Soros has been on such a run. Obviously, he was on Battle Royale just recently. But Soros has been on such a run in general with the topper clash, you know, being fantastic and all that. And it was just... I don't know. The expectation for me was a bit higher than that. Um... Not really hitting, you know, some, like, totally clips sort of bars here, cross sun at blackout. The crowd was sleeping, um, you know, used to be grinding clips, what happened to that boy. Yeah, there's some hard lines in here, don't get me wrong. I think Soros had some good material, sort of the evolution of his career, you know, he's teaching Charles Darwinism, which is pretty hard as well. Um, we get a Chris unbiased line, and then Chris, uh, uh, Soros saying at the end, you know, don't free Chris, which is uh, pretty funny as well. But yeah, tons of Chris unbiased lines, of course, there. And yeah, not not a bad verse. And then, um, you know, Clips it wasn't bad. Like, I think Clips kind of did what you expect him to do. But ultimately, Soros started to flail. You know, his third... There wasn't really anything in it. You could tell that his third was this big round going on and the fact that Clips lacked drive. And, you know, even if he can get three rounds out, what's that about sort of thing? But, you know, the tables turned. What you expected to be an unprepared uh, unprepared Clips kind of flail in front of a steadfast Saurus. Kind of the opposite, really. Clips played the situation perfectly, really. The crowd were really rocking with him. Like, the, Saurus couldn't really control this crowd. It was awkward how quiet they were. Like, I don't know. I don't know what it was. Maybe the room needed to be a little bit smaller for him. But Clips seemed to thrive in that environment and ultimately won out had some good stuff here um you know he sort of talks about the lot of the hypocrisy we had some jay-z four four bars you know all that sort of stuff but i i liked it sora still had some good material you know painting the wall with clips like carry from homelands a bit more questionable um exposing clips his negative side like a dark room is really hard as well but yeah the irony um, of Soros kind of falling on his own sword, especially considering all this Twitter beef as well that he was building up, you know, beef, quote unquote beef. But yeah, Clips versus Soros is kind of indicative of the event as a whole, really, where it was just kind of on paper brilliant, but little weird things happen in the battle and, and it didn't kick off as you wanted it to. Next up was DNA versus Jims. I've got to confess, this is the only battle on the on the pay-per-view that I haven't like watched, watched properly. It's one that I sort of fell asleep in the middle of because I was watching it late at night and then um, you know, sort of caught up later on in the day, so I've kind of watched half and half, but I was very impressed, um, you know, I remember watching Jim's when he was battling Loso on Blackout, and I didn't feel him as much there, I thought his wordplay was a bit predictable, and kind of his angles as well were a little bit, even though I love that he launched that blog when he went on stage, that was fucking awesome, but um, yeah, it wasn't that most uh, convincing of material, but yeah, this was a better battle, I thought Jim's was excellent for out here, and I thought he clowned on DNA physically very well in the first as well, People loved him as his personality is clearly shining through. He's got those vlogs behind him. There was this sense of kind of reception that he was getting that maybe Saurus even, you know, wasn't being gifted as such. Um, DNA was fine. I mean, DNA, this is a problem. I saw DNA recently versus Scoop where she spoke at the um, uh, checkpoint, um, you know, uh, backstage and stuff like that on the on the Don't Flop Facebook channel. Great guy. But he's kind of doing the same rounds over and over again, I don't know if anyone's getting that feel, like, you know, obviously the different bars, different name flips, whatever, but there's just that cadence, and he understands battle rap, and he's kind of attacking it from that angle, and he knows what works, and he knows what can win in battles, but at least get him, you know, booked, and popular views, etc, he has a huge fan base, but I wasn't really stirring with it, I think purely for kind of, you know, uniqueness of approach, I had to go with Jim's by default, um, I just found him a bit more exciting to witness, but yeah, this was a good battle, actually, you know, I think, um, First two battles are a bit more questionable, to be honest with you, but this one got the tone going. This is definitely a bit more interesting. Um, next battle, Daylight versus Mickey Fags. I mean, you've got to... Like, there is this worship of Daylight in certain, cir certain circles, and I understand that, but, like, he's mostly trash. Like, I think, I think you've got to... If you want to look objectively, you know, people like to, like, um, judge battles on rounds, and how can you deny if someone, you know, has won two-thirds of a battle, then obviously they've won, you know, by default, they have the most. And, like, for me, Daylight, for everything he's heralded as, like, not only is there the constant Mickey taking, the constant disrespect, like, especially this is disrespectful on Massacre, not only to Mickey, but to Nakaya, to King of the Dark, etc., to the crowd, to fans. What the fuck were you doing in, in this battle, Daylight? You were genuinely saying nothing. You thought you were deep with your mother, Nate, fatherland kind of you know double entendres it was really hollow and i don't mean the don way it was just empty shallow nothing is worse than well actually even worse than reaching is intellectual reaching i'm not talking about you know semiotically i'm talking about literally in terms of like ideas you're trying to give across this sort of broad enlightened phase and i i was not fucking with it and a lot of people were not fucking it to the point you got booed twice daylight gets booed twice here um and it just yeah it kind of 
there's it's very thin margins with daylight for a lot of people i personally don't really you know fuck with him that much to be honest with you but people who do seem to kind of engage with him this kind of you know he'll do a nursery line perhaps and win the battle but it didn't work here I've never seen him been beaten so convincingly, um, in the modern era at least, uh, by Mickey Fax. So I wasn't really feeling that much either, but he was quite good. Technically, he was good. He, you know, his verses were well rehearsed, well performed. Bar for bar, I, I thought a lot of his stuff was sort of stale. I'd heard it before, especially in the first. There was a lot of day puns that had kind of, you know, resided around my head and stuff like that. But regardless, it was a big challenge for him to come onto an event of this caliber versus an opponent of Daylight's Calibre when he does show up, even if he doesn't show up, it's kind of a miasma to combat there, and yeah, I personally felt that Mickey Fax probably took this all free, it's not the best battle either, I imagine Mickey would have probably wanted a more attacking Daylight, everyone would have done, but we had a sort of, I don't know, just like a kind of nothing Daylight really, you know, a Daylight that has no value to rewatch, and it's a shame that, you know, he brought this and didn't bring what some heralded, you know, your sort of... Uh, what are some good daylight performances? I'm trying to think of the top of my head. I'm not the biggest fan of him. Um, the Crip in the Box one, maybe? I don't know. The Real Deal one? I'm unfairly pointing out where he's a bit of a douche. I know that. But um, comment below. Wasn't too much of a fan of this one. But yeah, good to see Mickey Fax kind of coming through. And he had some okay stuff. He had like a meta metaphor, matador, cape and ball, cape and ball. Or so, you know, he had some sort of cute stuff that I sort of respected on a certain level. But it wasn't a performance that really kind of, you know, stirred me. And I think this battle will be viewed as kind of a interesting artifact and novelty rather than something that people are really going to return to as a, as a vestige of penmanship. Then out of nowhere, we had the surprise battle. You know, the lights went down, some guys are hood on stage, the lights go up, suddenly it's it's Hollow Diz. You know, Hollow the Dom versus Disaster is going down, which is pretty exciting. The loyalty over money guy versus... Uh, the everything else guy in battle rap and yeah i think Diz said as well at the start it's kind of similar to the pat stay hollow thing like they are going to do a bigger battle which is kind of is this a new trend in battle rap like okay i know the battle of the brave one was kind of truncated for reasons beyond their means but this is a kind of an interesting thing they knew this was going to happen so they didn't just announce it like when jonah went on summer mad it's like oh this is going to happen now in the next battle it's like no it's actually you know they're going to battle right now they did a one rounder and inevitably very controversial hollow went first controversial not just because of the time um, I thought Hollow was really, really good, though. I thought, you know, he kind of, um, he played it well, and he kind of got into him, and, you know, they had a good kind of back and forth here, but Diz kind of had more to prove, I think, coming off the back of the series thing. I don't quite know how Diz went for. I think he went for at least 15 minutes, at least twice, maybe even three times Hollow thing after rewatches again, but... It would probably get down to the biggest thing where Hollow basically sat down in a chair because Diz was spitting so long. And then Hollow, I think, you know, he, he called Diz the N-word or, you know, you can sort of see it on YouTube, obviously, um, for what it was. But a uh, lot of controversy. The crowd went very dead at that point. Um, remember Marv won afterwards when they were doing the interviews. It was Marv and uh, Dirtbag Dan who were basically on stage with headsets. It's kind of a bit of a ghetto setup, but it was pretty cool. Um when they're on there, and uh, Marv said was quite upset, or he looked a bit annoyed that he's in his feelings, didn't really know how to react to it, and I believe Diz was quoting Lux or Hollow or something, like, yeah, yeah stand up, don't lean, isn't it, yeah, um, Lux said that against Hollow in the, in the battle on YouTube, but I think so anyway, I have to rewatch it, but yeah, so, I mean, a kind of a slightly cataclysmic end to what should have been a big celebratory moment, and for the most part it was, I think, up until that moment itself. Hollow delivered definitely, had the energy. Can't remember too much of this bar-wise, um, but, I mean, very cool that it happened anyway, and I'm sure, you know, it'll go down at your blackout or whatever, you know, there'll be some sort of thing coming up there. So, um, next up we had Chiller versus Ilmac, and, um, you know, Chiller always says you ain't never stood in front of three rounds like this. Like, I've, no one's ever stood in front of Chiller where he sound like this either. Like, Jesus Christ, the guy was bunged up. The guy had a cold, and he sounded really, you know, he already sounds kind of nasally, Chiller. Um, and, you know, this was a boring battle, um, to be honest with you. I think I myself, you know, like a lot of people were big Ilmac fans, especially because of the Watch series, but in general, I'm going to have Ilmac on the show soon on Battle Rock Resume for a full interview. I've had Chiller on before. If you listen to this show at all, you know that I used to be the biggest Chiller stan. Um, probably from his kind of tryout battle, um, I think it was, what was this, Gatman Jones that even come out? That was kind of like not even on verse track of that battle, but yeah. And then he had kind of his um, Inner State Flames, and I used to just love all that sort of stuff. And, you know, when he got to URL, of course, as well, and then he's King of the Dark early days, you know, his battles against uh, Dead Man and Daylight are fucking great. But there's something, I don't know, something around 2014, 2015, I just lost him in interest in Chiller. I think he kind of, the strings were showing a bit more. His wordplay is way more predictable. I'm way more aware of it, and he kind of just doesn't have the quality that he had back in the day. And 
this is just a bit of a clumsy battle, really. I thought Ilmac did well. I thought, you know, they attacked each other's angles. Chiller kind of slipped up here and there. Had some quite, like, just a lot of uninventive stuff that doesn't really stick with anybody. You know, I, I, I didn't find it very memorable. And I've seen a lot of reactions on Twitter that people aren't really, you know, going over this battle too crazily. But, yeah, not bad, you know. I mean, not necessarily pockmark performances from either of them, but nothing too that, you know, sticks in the mind either. But, you know, great. You know, I guess as a testament to them, but not in terms of entertainment value, the greatest battle ever. Uh, we also had Sharon versus Averb as well. Um, I think Sharon took that pretty cleanly. Uh, I think Averb wasn't very good. I think Averb hasn't been good for a long time. I think Averb gets embarrassed on the King of the Dot stages mostly. I'm thinking especially the Ilmac performance. Um, his lines just aren't very good. He's slow. He's sluggish. He seems to think what he says is more profound than it is. He garners the crowd reaction with Sharon, kind of, you know, absolutely, you know, grips it, goes for it, kind of embraces what it can give you um, as a performer. I didn't think Averb was very good at all um, in this, to be honest with you. And it was kind of sad as well when the most energetic crowd, the moment the crowd got, um, for him at least, was when he kind of went into his showtime and they sort of did it for him and then he kind of didn't have that, you know, it just kind of, maybe because the battle had been, like, over long, meant to have months ago or whatever, Sharon definitely had a, you know, surplus of material, Sharon was excellent, I think Sharon had given a really, really polished performance as well, look at me when I'm retiring you, was one of his closing lines, which is really strong, I can't really remember any rebuttals Sharon did, I'm sure he did some, but, yeah, this was, um, pretty one-sided, I mean, which is a problem with a few of these mass battles, where they're kind of, you know, it's kind of one person putting another person to bed, you know, in case of Mickey, in case of Clips even perhaps with, with Soros, but definitely in case of Sharon and Ilmac as well, not the greatest contests. Next we had Ars versus Solomon, I mean if you're a fan of these guys, I'm sure you'd enjoy this battle, I thought it was okay, I'm not a big fan of either really, I think they both kind of adopt a very kind of monotonous cadence and way of flowing at times, and it just became listening to three minutes of one and three minutes of the other, and you know there's some pretty offensive shit as well, Iron Solomon talking about loads of like odd sex stuff, like but he had like jizz on your spine come back, which is all fall and stuff like that and then ask kind of t talking more on the fight club era and you know he acknowledged the whole lux thing and went in on it hard and you know didn't show the signs of someone whose final battle is coming up in two weeks and it's against one of the greatest to ever do it so props to us as well but yeah this was fine this was not you know I, I, the crowd were quite tired for this one it seemed because you know it had been a long day or whatever or just before the penultimate battle so yeah this wasn't this wasn't too good oh and um solomon had a penultimate uh, bar as well so you know and finally we had pat versus big k which is um again i'm not the biggest fan of either of these guys really don't dislike them i'm just not the biggest accolades but this wasn't a bad battle um, Big K clearly won, I felt, um, quite easily. I think, um, you know, the opening of his first, he actually went second. Pat's first was just kind of giggly, goofy Pat, you know, kind of playing on Big K's presentation, the spelling of his name, his street status, etc. K was a bit more formulated, a bit more direct. Again, he was kind of playing on stuff, but he went at his job, he went at his attitude, he went at the coke, he, you know, and just had a bit, a bit more in enjoyable wordplay as well, a bit more enjoyable punches. Pat kind of... Just he's, he's, he's just on a tracks at times, isn't he? He's just on rails. It can be a little bit just kind of like, you know, it's going forward and you know where it's moving to and you know what cadence he's going to switch to and what aggression he's going to adopt or if he's going to be silly this round. And he fought back, you know, he seemed motivated to a certain extent, but I don't know, he didn't look like Big Man Pat. He didn't like King of the Dot Pat. Maybe it's because we're not in Canada, I don't know. But um, yeah, I thought Big K took that. I thought Big K, um, you know, worked well. He varied his stuff. These are quite long rounds as well, which is good to see sometimes with Big K, especially you can see kind of short rounds, but clearly he was, um, you know, putting his credence in there. Yeah, I mean, a good battle. And overall, there's some good battles on Mass 3. I don't want to, you know, disrespect the league or anything like that. Obviously, shout out to King Lidlop, but you've got to be, you know, objective here as a critic, as a, as a vlog or whatever. Um, but just personally, I mean, let me know comments, as I say, below. Most of these battles are okay. Most of these battles were kind of like, I'm watching because I love King of the Dart and, you know, I love the kind of contest and the, the pageantry of it to a certain extent. But there's not many, I mean, I'll probably watch Sora's clips again just because I thought it was quite interesting, even though it was quite ugly. I thought I, I kind of liked the way the battle played out and it was interesting to see Sora's kind of struggle, um, which is kind of unfamiliar for, for him of late. What other battles were good? Yeah, I guess Big K was quite good as well against Pat State. I didn't really like Ars Iron. I kind of, you know, tolerated it. Um... Mickey Daylight was weird. Shotty P and, yeah, Jim's and DNA. Probably Jim's and DNA. Something along those lines. Chill it all, mate. Wasn't, they weren't too good. But, um, yeah, this has anyway been a quick little pay-per-view pay recap. 
Let me know what you think. Um, please get in contact with the show as well. Please pick up the pay-per-view, King of the Dot pay-per-view, Google that. You can pick it up. You know, I know I've not really <laughs> sold it that well, but if you want to support King of the Dot, definitely go support them as well. Obviously, the battles will be on the channel, so go support their channel. Subscribe to this channel if you don't already. You know, I post videos, probably three or four videos a week, all about battle rap, so if you want to keep us date on that. We've got the Patreon as well if you want to support us even more so. But yeah, this has been Tom at Battle Resume. Thank you, guys, and thank you, King of the Dot. Thank <laughs> you.